Hello, my name is Tracy Ingram with Intention Technology, and my passion is understanding the language of the human body. I have worked with biofeedback devices from around the world and heard amazing stories that you won't believe. Thank you. So today I'm going to tell you about listening to the body with biofeedback. But it started when I was just six years old. I got a new friend. A friend that a lot of you probably know, Atari. But it wasn't the 2600. I got the Atari 400, which was a computer. It actually came with BASIC, a word processor, a lot of things that we know of today as a computer. And what was interesting about that is it really put me on a different path and not one as a gamer. But so this is my story. This is me at 12 years old and my little brother. And it's actually his birthday today. <laughs> but this Christmas was a special Christmas because this Christmas I got a computer and my brother got a Nintendo. And so I continued on the path of computers while he learned gaming. What happened, though, was really magical to me is because being his older brother, I got to experience gaming through his eyes. And I got to be the coach. And so I got to see it in a way that was really magical because I could really connect and understand how it affected him. And so I went on and learned a lot about computers. And although I gamed, I never really had time because I was always playing on the computer, building something or doing something. And I ended up opening my own computer consulting company by age 18. And I became the top salesperson at Sears in the computer department. And then I got scared. And I don't think I've ever really told too many people this story, but what happened was, I don't know if any of you have watched Terminator. <laughs> I thought I was building Skynet. It scared me. And I literally took three years that I didn't touch a computer and I didn't touch a video game. And in that time, I learned different technologies. I learned things like yoga, <laughs> meditation, massage, and ways of learning to balance the body. And so I didn't have any computers and I didn't have any sensors but I learned to really how to connect with myself and how do I balance this machine, not all the ones out there. So after three years went by, my mom probably didn't stand for the fact that I dropped out of school and went to an organic farm for a while. <laughs> and there was a, there were university opened up, Florida Gulf Coast University, and I was asked to, you know, I came in, so the, the very first day of school, I enrolled in school, signed on my house, and moved in and did all my transcripts and then went to class. And the very first day in class, now I hadn't touched a computer in three years, and we're sitting there and they wanted us to do email. And this was a little bit before the cloud. So to do email, you had to format a floppy disk. But this was the first day of school and they hadn't realized that their security was so tight that they couldn't format a floppy disk. So the director of technology for the university, not the lab assistant, but the director of technology had to come in and remove the, pass, remove the security from every single computer in the lab. And so I'm joking with the kid next to me and I go, I'll have that password by the end of the week. Because I knew I could figure things out. He overheard me. He says, fill out an app, you can have it tomorrow. <laughs> next thing I know, I was back in computers again. And through that, I you know, worked in the computer lab, and I ended up picking up this part-time job 60 hours a week. <laughs> and a company called Walden University. And I went on to become in charge of a team that was responsible for tech support for 39 countries. So when someone calls for tech support, I'm there. It's what I do. <laughs> but it wasn't until the next venture that I really realized where all of this would come together. And it was after I left Walden, I ended up getting a degree in massage. And so I went from 
the highest level computers back to massage therapy. And then after that, I was introduced to biofeedback. And by being introduced to biofeedback, I finally found that how my understanding of the body and computers could be one. You want to know what the weirdest thing I found when I was doing tech support before? Is that with about 70% of the people who called me for tech support, you know I fixed their problem? I told them to take a deep breath. So I went on to become a biofeedback. Um, I actually ended up having a company that did biofeedback tech support for about eight different companies. And honestly, I got to play with a lot of toys. And this is a little definition of biofeedback for those of you who aren't familiar with it. It's really just measuring the physiological responses of the body. And I sat in a class one day, and, and one instructor showed me the simplest test to be able to understand biofeedback. And it was a thermometer. And just by holding a thermometer between your fingers, you could measure your physiological responses. And when you get stressed, you get colder. And then when you feel blessed out and you feel happy, your temperature would always go up. And we sat in class just sitting there making the thermometer go up and down, up and down, <laughs> up and down. And there's not a lot you can do with that, but it was really interesting that you start realizing that you had control over it. So any of you who are cold right now, just think warm. <laughs> or think about that most amazing vacation or that most special moment, and you'll just get filled with that warmth all over your body. So this is what a lot of people think of as biofeedback. <laughs> And it really doesn't have to be this invasive. <laughs> because this is also biofeedback. And a lot of you guys are already doing it. And in fact, half of you here probably have cell phones that have touch interfaces that are also biofeedback devices. And so biofeedback is something that's really not foreign to us anymore because we're doing it. And so working in tech support in biofeedback, I got to play with a lot of really cool tools. This one was called the stress eraser. As you see, the graphics are about that of Pong. <laughs> but it did a really cool thing. Little small device, you put your finger in it, and it would teach you how to breathe. So now I'm back to yoga again. I'm like, oh wow, I learned how to breathe through a computer. <laughs> OK, this is interesting, but it works. We're gamers, and we want a little bit more. So I found another device called the Wild Divine. And by just measuring your heart rate and your galvanic skin response, you could stack rocks. Sure, you could go outside and stack rocks, but <laughs> stacking rocks with just the power of your mind is cool. And another device I found was called the Emotive. Now, this is a pretty cool device because they, can, they actually claim they can measure 12 different emotional responses. And in that, imagine the implications for gaming. Imagine when you're playing a game and the game knows you're bored. <laughs> and it dynamically shifts. It's a new field called intelligent gaming. What happens when you're so frustrated, you know, or you're playing with your parents and they can't, you know, they get to play for five minutes, you play for two hours? What if the game dynamically adjusted based on who was playing? Balancing the level, leveling the playing field, balancing it. A lot of biofeedback is all about balance. But what was really cool that I found out about this device is that although it was really cool that it could measure emotions and it could tell you if you're moving, you know, you could think forward and you could just get this for your computer right now. And you could play World of Warcraft with it. You can walk through the maze, go forward, back, left, right jump. But what was interesting is they found another button. Another thing. Magic. And that every one of us is hardwired for just a little bit of magic. And so what they do in the, in the trial when you're playing this is you make that box disappear. And they found out the same brain wave in the same part of everyone's brain can make that box disappear. And they can measure it. 
And that I thought was really cool because it's, now it's looking at unlocking things that we don't even know we can do. But they took it a step further. And they actually decided to control a wheelchair with it. So they walked outside the game. And someone, by just putting a headset on, was able to drive around in a wheelchair. While that's cool, this is still normal biofeedback. And what I got introduced to 10 years ago goes way beyond any of this stuff. So has anyone heard of applied kinesiology or muscle testing? Some chiropractors do it. A lot of different people do it. But basically what it is is the idea is that you have innately in your body a circuit. And when you get stressed, your muscles will get weak. And when you're strong, confident, your muscles will stay strong. It's very simple. It's a little controversial. But so what I found was biofeedback devices that actually took this technology and applied it, testing the body similar to a lie detector with a database and starting to look at how do you really check in with the body and see what's going on. Now, while I may be able to balance my breathing, can I balance 100 items, 1,000 items, 10,000, million? When we have so many cells, so many things that are going on with it in all of our organs, how do we achieve balance with that? So my vision is that the lost language of the body is electrical in nature. And from our brain to our heart to all of our cells, the information is there. We don't need to go outside and take tests to find out what's wrong with us. Our body knows what's wrong with us. And through measuring the electrical system of the body, we can measure that. What they found is with things like Chinese medicine and the acupuncture meridians in the body actually have a voltage to them. And they can test that voltage and find out if your organs are stressed. So all of this sounds great, but what do you do with it? Well, if you take some biofeedback sensors, a mobile computer, some applied kinesiology, some cloud storage, you have a multifunction testing device or for those Trekkies in the room, a tricorder. <laughs> now, what's fascinating about this is that I wasn't the only one that had an idea that we need to build a tricorder. So they've actually come up with a contest right now by the XPRIZE that was just released in January, a $10 million prize to build the tricorder. So who wants to help me build one? <laughs> Thank you.